Welcome back to The Gentleman Bon Vivant. I am Christopher, and with me is my darling bride of almost 32 years. We got married back in June of 1991 when Jerry and I were both in our late 40s. The secret you ask, scotch whiskey, and a hefty supply of creme de cassis and Aperol. Mmm, so good. But this is part two of our deep dive into the subject of dining etiquette, and today we are out for a Sunday stroll in the Fuskinget zone of our neighborhood here in Kaiserslautern. In part one, we covered 14 of the 28 tips and rules necessary for behaving as a gentleman should while dining. Today, we're gonna to cover the last 14, and we hope that you can take this back with you to enjoy uh, you know, the dining experience for yourselves, whether you're at home, whether you're out on the town, or you're over with friends and family. We want this to be helpful for you. Um, not helpful, then maybe even just slightly entertaining. Maybe just so this is like a dad groan, like the dad Joe groan, something. I'm really not quite sure. But we all know that every single second in the life of a gentleman bon vivant is a special occasion. So treat it as such. Live well. So anyway, the point of that little B-roll footage there that we picked up was to um, highlight how simple it is just to get the chair, just to get the chair and to learn some basic conversational skills um the folks at, that own the gelato the gelato gelato in germany would be gelato but um, the people who own the ice cafe speak both italian and german so i always do my best to try to uh to try to use both as i'm as i'm going um <clears throat> just to communicate with them they're so sweet terribly terribly sweet people and so we really enjoy spending our time there on occasion um so anyway, but that's just an example of how easy that is to do. Uh, Jerry loves to say bene, right? You know, prego, right? So it's just kind of fun. You get to throw it out there and kind of see what we can find. So uh, Jerry, why don't we discuss the, the first rule? Why don't you kick us off with that? Uh, number, the number 14 tip. Which should be 15. Sorry. <laughs> I need to get my uh, medicine. It's, uh, um, well, it's, oh, it's 6 well, let's see. Uh, seriously, keep your mouth closed when you're chewing. And wait until you swallow to start speaking. These are probably some pretty important tips. Um, I know people who will leave the room so that they don't have to sit around people who are smacking. Smacking. Well, smacking. that's what it is, smacking. It they don't like it. And it is literally something that is like fingernails on a chalkboard to them, and they will walk away. It's a DNA thing, I think, like not liking cilantro or... Very, very possible. I don't know, but it happens. But it just, I mean, good manners is not... Yeah, we don't want to expose anyway our because friends and family to seafood. Nobody wants seafood. No seafood. No, not at all. Um... Uh, no, I can think of a, a couple of exceptions to this. Like, oh my God, fire, there's a fire! There's a fire! Okay. okay, fine, you know, or get out! You got a gun, that kind of thing, maybe. But someone's no. choking. Yeah, you could go do the Heimlich. Do the Heimlich with your mouth while you're still smiling. Full or whatever. Exactly. So, but uh, so <laughs> number fifteen would be: do not lean over your plate and shovel food into your mouth. Right? I mean, no matter how hungry you are, one bite at a time. Chew each bite, swallow it. Take a sip of your wine or your water and then have another bite. Take your time and savor your food, right? You know, you'll find you probably eat less that way. And uh, <clears throat> you'll feel better at the end of it all as a result. So, yeah, take your time. Chew each bite. Uh, don't don't act like you're back in a basic training or boot camp or something where you just got to get it all in, right? You know, so just relax. One bite of sweet time. tea. Think of that poor starving dog and how it looks when you give it something to you, right? It just makes it so sweet. <laughs> So, <clears throat> number 16, Milo. Oh, Mine uh, shuts in. This was a really tough one for me. 
When you're cutting your meat, you should only cut one bite size at a time and eat it. You don't want to cut it all up because it will get dry and get cold. Or you um, you look like you're five years old. And yeah, you meat up. which is me. Because I like to get the work over with and then eat. But I can do that in the privacy of our home. But if we go out, I, I'd have to do better. I can't do that out in public. But yeah, it is hard. I'm, I don't like to eat food that's a lot of work. Called me lazy, whatever, but. Completely understand. I mean. <clears throat> I always ask Christopher, will you cut up my steak? One small bite at a time, sweet. Five Jesus. years old. Uh, no, it's all good. <laughs> what we do in private is what we do in private. Um, what's funny though, I actually sit and eat just like I do anywhere else when I'm by myself. It's pretty funny. Uh, soup number 17 in German Suppe. Super, but uh, when eating soup, you know, you want to get that last bit, you can tell people that you did your soup. Though I think it might look a bit gauche, uh, but it's okay, it's perfectly acceptable. Uh, taking and throwing your spoon down and just drinking, <sighs> slurping is I don't know, akin to smacking, and it's completely unacceptable. So don't pick up your bowl and get the last of your soup out, uh, tilt it if you must into your spoon, but it's very hard to resist. If you are at Thai Garden in Cleburne and they bring you that little bowl of lemon broth or something. And not to confuse so Cleburne, delicious. Texas with the many other metropoli, <laughs> sprawling metropoli across the United States. <laughs> We're talking about the Cleburne in Texas, which is in the, which is the county seat of Johnson. Um, just south of Fort Worth. Uh, that's where my in-laws are from. So, when you're wearing a tie, you might feel compelled to throw it over your shoulder when you're eating or tucking it into your shirt like some sort of World War II airman or something. Don't do that. It's just, it's just unacceptable. L leave your tie on, slow down, eat one bite at a time, be careful, go through your dinner like a, what's that word again? Gentleman. Gentleman. And number 19 brought to you by Shotzi. I know everyone has always been told, don't eat with your elbows on the table. Don't put your elbows on the table. It's a pretty, it's a, it's true. You don't want to be putting your elbows on the table when you're eating. Um, you can, you can when you have to do, do it when you've had after coffee. you eat, when you're having coffee. coffee or something, but while you're eating, don't put your elbows on the table. If you are unsure, don't put your elbows on the table. Better safe than sorry. Exactly. And with that, I'll move us to number 20, which is <laughs> don't blow your nose at the table. And I don't know how else to put it. It would be the same as passing gas. I mean, no one wants to hear that come out of your nose. No one wants to hear that come out of your third, third point of contact. You're depending hiding. on what branch you were in in the United States Army or the fifth point of contact. But nevertheless, you don't want that coming out of that point of contact. Um, it's the same thing. It's just disgusting. And everybody will know. <laughs> You can't hide that one. You can't blame that one on the dog, right? So just just don't ever. In fact, don't ever pass gas unless you're by yourself somewhere far away from anybody else. Um, it's disgusting. I personally don't. I was just gifted with the kind of uh, system that doesn't <laughs> produce that anyways. Kind of, it's kind of, oh you know, my it's gosh. Very, very nice. Shut up, baby. So if I were getting up from the table. TMI. If I were getting up from the table uh, during our dinner, uh, what would I say to you, sweetheart, bringing up Number 21. Excuse me. Please excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Yes. We'll be back shortly. We'll be back shortly. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a moment. Give me a moment. I, I must blow my nose. I must pass <laughs> gas. I mean, I know. You just get up and excuse yourself. Oh my gosh. So. I just thought of the poopery commercials. Yeah. Oh those are funny. Anyway. Okay. Got it. Next. Poopery is not a sponsor. Just no. Uh, but would, the commercials would mind are it. pretty funny. Wouldn't mind them being a sponsor. So, <clears throat> number 22, it's interesting that it would fall on me because this would be extremely hypocritical. Um, don't be that guy who drinks too much, right? You know what that guy looks like. It's certainly not the behavior of a gentleman, unless it's a gentleman's, you know, bachelor party or something. It's don't, don't drink too much at the table. Don't, you know, don't be too loud and boisterous about things. Um, it just doesn't look good. It's not a good... Uh, 
It's not a good image to be projecting, and it shows very that you easy can't... to cross over to obnoxious. Very easy to do that, um, but unless you can really hold it together, you know. I mean, you know what your limit is, right? No, you know, most people could, don't. If you I can disagree. have eight glasses of wine, then you're fine. But if you can have two before you're getting tipsy and plenty, then keep it at one and a half. That, that's just my advice. Um, number twenty-three, babe. What you got? Um, always remember to thank your host, thank your waiter, thank your waitress, thank whoever you can that is um, helping you and contributing to your dining pleasure. Absolutely. Just good manners. Always say please and thank you. Good manners. It's absolutely it's pretty you know, basic. You can show your appreciation with a tip. We'll get to you later. Yes. But I'm yes. simply saying that as part of number four, number 24, saying please and thank you when you're asking for anything like a glass of water a second helping a check anytime you're being given something anytime you have an opportunity to engage with a server then by all means say thank you and please please and thank you um it's very important in german right it's uh not any different than in spanish you know uh you know what about or s'il vous plaît in french and we always make sure we, we ask that <clears throat> in the intro, uh, the video that we did from the Fontanella, La Fontanella Ice Cafe, uh, you'll have heard me ask uh, Doriana in, in German after I gave her greetings in Italian. I asked her in German if I could, can I pay right away, please? You know, in other words, it was getting a little bit colder. We wanted to get inside with her, you know, after we had our drinks, we live right next door. So the question was, you know, can I please pay, you know, right away, so to speak, versus waiting? So that's just an idea. Learn how to say please in every language that you'll be encountering. Um, sorry, sweetheart, you got number 25. Well, that's quite all right. Compliment the cook, especially if you're in someone's home. It's not that easy to go into a kitchen and compliment the chef, but you can always pass that on through your server and tell them to please give your compliments to the chef. What if your food is green or burnt? Then what do you say? Um, well, if I was in someone's home, I would pretend that that was not the case. But that's just me because I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. Um, actually, I mean, when you're in a restaurant, you can send your food back yeah. if you want. But in a home, I mean, I just, I'm not going to complain about someone's food. I'm just not going to do it. Yeah, no. I mean, I mean, it, uh, but it's just obvious, like the, the turkey got burned or something. I'm trying to look, look. I know it feels like everything was a disaster, but honestly, thank you for the effort, and, and it really right. was great. Thank That's you. Right. You know that kind of thing. even just thank you for having us. Is sweet Absolutely. and thoughtful. Absolutely. Okay. Since you burnt the food and ruined everything else, I'm going to go ahead and get over drunk at the table and be loud and have a response. So. <laughs> So, anyway, anyway. Uh, bring up number 26. Uh, be sure to say goodbye to your hosts. I mean, if they're talking to someone at the time and you got to get on the road because I had the babysitter called or whatnot, then make sure you tell someone in the house to to have them uh, make sure that they know that you meant to say goodbye. And regardless of whether that person actually expresses that message on or not, it's not your concern. What you want to do is you definitely want to call uh, or send a, a card in the mail. I mean, it's text if you want but i think that's classless just send something in the mail saying how much you appreciate it uh, and you know whatnot that you had a wonderful time and that uh we're so thankful to have been invited looking forward to the next go around um mm -hmm. <clears throat> anyway so i think that's a pretty solid rule i think it's a pretty good tip right so yes. uh but what do you have for number 27 this involves some sort of exercise I think. you just practice your table manners every day if you do them every day they will just be natural so yeah the, that's the best thing the more you do it the less awkward it is and it just becomes second nature to you this is very true and uh i would say lastly as 28 comes around <clears throat> when you're going out to dinner with other people besides your date politely discuss ahead of time how you're going to take care of paying the check a good rule of thumb in shea cumbus in the cumbus household is that if we've invited someone to dinner then we're going Tab doesn't matter. Hey, do you guys want to come join us for dinner tomorrow night at say the Twenty One Club? Yeah, that'd be great. You know, okay, well we'll meet you there at six thirty. That work? Yeah, that sounds awesome. Okay, super. Um, don't even whatever. I'm just planning on picking up the tab. It's not going to be a question, right? I'm paying for dinner. 
we also know that doesn't always happen when you're out with right. your mother-in-law and father-in-law. Not at all. So it's it just one of those things. So you now, have to be fast. Yeah, if you're talking to a group of people or you just don't want to pay for everybody's dinner because you're going to the kind of place that's very expensive and you're just like, look, we'd like to go to this place. Would you guys like to join us and, you know, uh, you know, go with halves kind of a thing, right? You know, and we can have to check. You guys yeah. want to have to check with me tomorrow? I know that we talk about going Dutch, but I'm not quite sure that that's not an insult to those from from the place formerly known as Holland. I don't, I don't it might just be awful to say that. So I don't know. I haven't really looked into it, but I avoid it because it's involving a certain group, culture, ethnicity. You wouldn't want to hurt anybody's feelings. So don't go Dutch. Just say, hey, you want to... You wanna you wanna split the tab and you wanna split the tab up at the, the twenty one club tomorrow night. Jerry and I were thinking of going. You wanna join us? That kind of thing. So uh, it's nice if you can organize that even before you meet, so that you don't have to discuss it at the table. Exactly. So and again, and especially in Europe, they will always separate your your order out for you and charge everybody individually. You know, it's just gonna be up to you. Um, I don't know. I, to me, just if I invited you to dinner, I'm gonna wind up paying for it unless we discuss ahead of time. However, just keep in mind, it is perfectly acceptable to split the check at the end of the meal. Um, <clears throat> just don't, just make sure that that's pretty clear up front when you invite someone to dinner. That's, the, I mean, they might be expecting you to pay. So, you know, we don't want to have that piece. So <clears throat> anyway, um, um, if we have, if you have anything that you'd like us to, to discuss further before we move on to the next topic, you can just what? Put it in the comments. Put it in the comments, yes. Let us know. Otherwise, we truly look forward to continuing this adventure with you. And until next time, remember, there may have been many, many, many times, almost many to the nth power, where we had no money. But uh, We were never poor. Never. Not once were we ever poor. Oh, what? Ciao. Bye. Chin -chin. <laughs>